This year, that is 2023, if you are watching this in the far far future, we are getting System Collapse, the latest full novel in the Murderbot Diaries series. And I realize that while I've done reviews, all the novels have gone through them on my channel, or I should say I've did a big rundown review. Uh, I haven't actually discussed them here for those of you who just prefer this content this way. So it's time to rectify that to take a world wind trip through all my thoughts on the novellas and one novel to date. I'm not going to be doing one by one, but I'll be just kind of doing an overall thought. So if you're worried about spoilers, you should be safe, generally safe here. The novellas and the novels follow the title character of Murderbot, the name that it chooses to refer to itself as. It, Murderbot has no gender and prefers the pronoun of it. It is also sex repulsed, so uh, a sex repulsed asexual. Um, sex, sex repulsed aromantic asexual. It is a, a segment that was formerly rented out by a security company that, at the start of the series, had rented it out to a um, planetary survey team run by the non-corporate governmental entity of Preservation. Murderbot has also hacked the their governor module that would fry its brain if it got too far away from its clients or disobeyed their orders, even if that would lead to its destruction. Or and this also would prevent him, this governor module also prevents him from doing a number of things. And so, frankly, it would like to spend the majority of its time rather than you know, dealing with these obnoxious people, watching media and not having to engage socially with all these obnoxious humans. However, over the course of the series, it gains its freedom after saving the preservation survey team from being murdered by a corporate entity, goes on the journey of self-discovery to find out some more information about an incident in its past, and determines that there are some humans that it wants to stay with and wants to make sure they're safe, even if it doesn't necessarily want to refer to them as family. Now, I am cisgendered. I am cisgendered male, he, him pronouns, and not sex repulsed, um, I, nor am I asexual. I am heterosexual. As a person on the autism spectrum, I've talked about a few times in the past, there is a lot about Murderbot that resonates with me. I'm not great at long, big, long-term social situations. To a degree, I seek them out because I'm expected to, as an extent. I don't go to holiday office holiday parties because I want to. I don't go to office social gatherings because I want to. I go to because it's expected to show them part of the team, show them part of the community. I would just as much, in a lot of respects, prefer to sit at home or what have you and watch media or go shopping to buy media or that sort of thing. Um, or play video games. And yes, I do do some voluntarily willing social things. I go to conventions. I gave a panel at Comoricon in 2022 on rec collecting anime soundtracks on vinyl, which went very well. But um, like that's also, it is specifically something that is related to my main interests. Um, and what I like to do. It is not a thing that is related to my... Um, it's, it's not also in all these case situations where I am doing active, repeated social interactions with a person or persons. Um, again, if given the choice, I stay at home, watch, read, or play media in some form or another. And indeed, like Murderbot... I rely on watching media, particularly in some cases media I'm very familiar with and have rewatched repeatedly as a way of managing my stress level, especially as crisis situations get more intense. Um, back in 2020, I talked about this a little bit on the channel at the time, if you want to go back and see the, watch those videos. Where I lived was a level two evacuation zone during the Oregon wildfires. And watching Game Center CX helped me keep from getting stressed out and potentially melting down, which also helped, which means if we had to get up and go, I was ready for that because I was able to moderate my stress level to, to the right degree. Again, so my, my big difference is with Murderbot, 
are not sucks for pulse. If if you've watched the blog, you or read my blog, you've seen I have reviewed a fair number of fan service anime and even some films that are sexually explicit. And they definitely can't review here. Um, stuff like I reviewed nine songs and short bus and that sort of thing. I enjoy eating and cooking, as evidenced by the various cookbook reviews I've done here and on my blog. Whereas Murderbot doesn't have a digestive system and doesn't see the appeal. Also, of course, there's the difference that Murderbot is a sec unit and has intense strength, regenerative abilities, and takes more of a beating than a human. It's got energy weapons built into its arms. Um, still, this with how Murderbot interacts socially and how it copes with social overexposure makes it a character that resonates in a way with me that other science fiction novel characters don't necessarily do with at the level of me as an autistic person. Its lived experiences are nothing like mine, but there are core elements of how it interacts with the world that resonates and feels representative. Even better, because Murderbot is the point of view character and the main protagonist, that makes it work even better because we have that sense of interiority that the parts of itself that it is not putting out into the public. Um, they're not showing to people in the sense with the sense of passing. Um, that autistic people like myself, we there are things we we are we have learned behaviors we do to pass as neurotypical instead of neurodivergent to help us get through the workplace to help us get to help us get a job to get in the workplace to earn money to have a place to live to buy media to help us get through this cycle and so having murderbot's perspective being centered in the novels like this helps helps provide that additional representation because we are seeing like I and other people on the autism spectrum like myself get to see through Murderbot our internal behaviors and internal conflicts expressed. So I mean by contrast, lots of like Murderbot is certainly not the first autism coded character in fiction or even science fiction, but many of them are supporting characters or part of a larger ensemble cast, even if they are a protagonist, they aren't necessarily a full first-person point of view character as Murderbot is. But So it being the protagonist and having the point of view fully be from its perspective with it as the narrator is wonderful. On top of that, the larger world of setting is really interesting. That There's some great world building, and it's really great to see the world the larger world through Murderbot's eyes, either directly or through its drones. And its affinity for media also helps provide other perspective, either with its description of the shows it's watching, <coughs> excuse me, or uh, like I said, there's just just actually yeah, just descriptions of the shows it's watching. We don't have that sense of what people do for entertainment and what the entertainment they present with is in lots of other shows. Um, Babylon 5 talks about uh, Skiffy and Fanti uh, comedy duo, and we do see them at some point, played by um, Penn Jillette and Penn and Teller, but that said, like, we don't know what other entertainment people watch on television, uh, or whatever passes for television. Um, we have, we get hollow novels in Next Generation and Voyager and DS9, um, but a lot of times they're riffing on established genres. We don't necessarily have it. In fact, often in some cases, like for example, the Dixon Hill stuff in Next Generation, it's deliberately throwback to previous materials. Dixon Hill is meant to be a adaptation, excuse me, an adaptation of a fictional um, series of hardboiled detective novels written contemporaneously with Sam Spade and the Continental Op and that sort of thing, because those works weren't in public domain yet. Hypothetically, if those works were, then it wouldn't be 
Dixon Hill that part that uh, Picard was pretending to be in the hol in the holodeck. He would be Sam Spade. He would be the Continental Op. He would be um, Lenny Caution. That sort of thing. Whereas here we have works of fiction, whereas with the Murderbot novels, we have works of fiction that are contemporaneous with this universe that are new works in this universe. We have the rise and fall of Sanctuary Moon, and while we don't have, uh, which is the preferred show that M Murderbot watch watches, and while it doesn't give like full episode synopses or anything like that, we get plot points here and there, and a sense of, like, yes, this is a soap opera plot, and some soap opera plots are eternal paternity crises and that sort of thing. But still, it's it's very interesting, and it helps gives a bigger sense of this world in terms of what what's the modern what is the contemporary soap opera equivalent of this of this setting. Also, the character interactions are really fun. How Murderbot interacts with the people around them. Um, both with both recurring characters from the preservation ops team uh, to self to other characters who don't know that Murderbot's a sec unit. All this is great. In particular, there's a scene in the first novel when the preservation ops team learns that Murderbot has hacked its governor module and has a whole bunch of data in its data banks that is media, including Rise and Fall of Sanctuary Moon. And there's a casual question that's asked about it. They don't think that it's watching it. And somebody says, Rise and Fall, like, ask, Rise and Fall of Sanctuary Moon, is that the one where the one character did the thing? And Murderbot responds, no, that's a goddamn lie. <clears throat> I was like, I think she'll be with, that's a fucking lie. Um, because, and everyone responds kind of deadpan. Oh, so it is watching it. And Murderbot's embarrassed. And I'm, remember reading that and going, this would look really well animated, especially with some of the exaggerated um, character expressions. Kind of makes me wish there was some form of Murderbot anime. That, speaking of which, as a quick note, cover-wise, Murderbot tends to only normally wear the sec unit armor in, like, the first book. All their stuff, because it's, it's trying to pass as human, it's not wearing the sec unit armor. Um, Taurus covers have it wearing the sex unit armor in all the books, but the Japanese covers appropriately reflect this by having Murderbot in their outside of the armor, and the character design fits how I exp expect and I'm kind of imagine it to look. A, a person who is kind of androgynous, but not too pretty boy, um, in the way that like the Bishon, like a Bishon in character can be in anime can come across as a drawdown. So it's a really good choice in character design. I do hope again um, that we get maybe some sort of murder bot animated adaptation at some point in the future. Fingers crossed. In any case, I absolutely recommend reading all these books. If you have not done so already, especially, especially the audiobooks are very good. The reader truly nails murder bots, internal voice, especially in situations where Murderbot is getting stressed out, um, like in network effects. So absolutely check those out. And the Murderbot Diaries books are available through Amazon, Al Libris, Kobo, wherever fine books are sold. I'll have links to where you can, affiliate links to where you can get those in the show notes. You know, the usual buying anything from those helps support the show. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.